Hello and welcome to the next part of making digital assets. In this part, I want to talk a bit about parameter creation and some different approaches to that. So in previous video, I made a fence tool and I already made one parameter. So let's expand a bit more on that. So we're going to go into our tool and also grab our menu. So edit asset properties and we have then our parameter menu. So let's talk a bit about this menu in general a bit more. So we can actually see here on the left side, that we actually have a lot of different types of parameters. So these are all the different parameters we can create. So these can go from floats, integers, to logarithmic floats, to ramps, to different ramps, drop down menus, certain color nodes, string values, toggles, different things for UV. We can also have like folders, colors, buttons, we also have things here for render properties, but we don't necessarily have to worry about that. We also here have node properties, so certain like object level properties, things like that. So don't worry about that one either. Uh, this one is a bit more interesting. This one can be a bit more interesting, which is from nodes. So we can actually grab directly from a certain node value. So here I have my procedural tool here, procedural fence tool. And I can, for example, ask box number eight or nine values. So if I go into my network here, so box number nine is for my planks. And I can directly now look into box number nine and all its possible parameters it has by itself. So either uh, you just drag and drop values in here, or you could also like go from nodes and select different parameters from nodes. Now, often why I would use from nodes if I need to expose a lot of values from a certain node directly into my menu. This doesn't happen like often for every tool, but it can happen occasionally that I have a certain uh, node and I would like to see most of that node's parameters available in my own tool. So that's a nice way of doing that. So now let's go back to by type. Now let's create some more parameters. So the way we did before was again, if I would put my menu on the side, let's say I want to grab my box nine, which is my plank. Maybe I should give this plank. And we're going to grab, for example, the scale of this plank. So the uniform scale, and we're going to drag and drop this in here and I'm going to let it go. So we have that scale. So we're going to also give this then a better name, plank scale, and then we have that set. So once we press apply or accept, we will actually now see this as a green and linked value with the channel reference. So this is the often again, the most common way to make parameters. Now, the other way, for example, now is to use the by type. So let's say I would like to have a float and it needs to control here this value. So the, basically we want to have the width of the plank manually controlled. So let's grab, for example, a float. I'm going to give this a proper name and label. So we're going to call this with blank. And we're going to also give this then the name or what's actually the unique parameter name. We can call this again with blank. What you could also do, which can be helpful in the long run is, for example, include what is this? So I would often sometimes type in a letter F for saying that this is a float. If I have an integer, I would use the I. If I have a toggle, I would use D and things like that. So this can be quite useful in the long run. If you ever need to access certain parameters, you know that this is basically a float value and it's called then with plank. You don't have to do this. You can build your own certain system or structure in how naming naming conventions should be, but it's up to you what naming conventions you should do. So again, here I was not consistent then in the way I created this before. So I would also have to change these as well. So now let's press apply. And my parameter is now set. And now I can go here to this value and I'm going to type in the channel reference. So we're going to say CH and we're going to then now have the channel. So it automatically will also give you some explanation on what actually is this. So we can see that this 
will basically return the value of a parameter. So now let's again use the same logic we have here. So dot dot slash, and then I can just, for example, type in F to see all my floats and I can have the blank width. And I'm going to just press tab on that and I'm going to close my uh, channel reference here. So that is done. So this is what you have to do. If your parameter did not pop up automatically, that means something is wrong. So often if I would remove this, you should see automatically things like this. So you should have your parameter available. So I now have that linked. So now that is fully working. That's no issue. So now let's go in our tool here and I can see that my scale is actually zero. So my plank width is actually zero. It should be actually a higher value than zero, of course. So here I have the main scale, but since my plank width is zero, that doesn't change that much. So now what we can do to have actually some default value is to go actually to channels here. And in channels, we are actually here assigning default values. So if I want this to be, for example, 0.5, I can type in here 0.5. So if I press apply, this is my default value now. So again, there are some more parameter menus and tabs, descriptions. So if you want to create a menu, you can create a menu, but it's not by default here supported with floats. Then we can also have some imports and also some action button where you can write some Python in. So, but most of the time, what menus you will be working in is either the parameter menu, of course, where we're gonna have the main properties, if you want to set defaults, use here this menu to set defaults. And if you ever later on want a menu, you can use this as well, which I of course will talk about in a future video. So this is set up. And what we notice as well is we can also again set a range. So by default, it might sometimes be disabled. So we're gonna enable range. So I can fill in that my minimum plank size should be 0.1, for example. And my maximum size for example, could be maybe one or two. So I press apply and you can see that my slider will also adjust to that. So if I go here to my view, my lowest value is then 0.1 and I can go up to two. So now I can, for example, add more blanks and make them smaller here as well. So now we are creating a more interesting menu. Now further more interesting here, is we can also quickly, for example, change the type of values. So we can also, for example, quickly change from a float to an integer or something else. As you can see, we have a lot of list different things to pick from, which are basically the same as we had here. So let's say you missed uh, and you want to actually have this to be a integer. So we can actually switch this to an integer now, press apply, and it will automatically now switch to an integer value. So since my default value is 0.5, it's going to now be zero since an integer cannot go beyond that. So now we can have our planks only be uh, zero, one or two. So you can see there we have that. So that can just be interesting that you might sometimes know that you can actually change these values. So let's go back to a float and press apply. And now we should have that result back. And these are again, the main ways of creating parameters. So often again, the easiest one is of course the drag and dropping. So if again, I want to, for example, have this value over here, the bevel, I can grab my bevel distance and I can say bevel planks. And press apply. So now we can have a option here to bevel our planks. Now something, something interesting here is that the slider, again, is not that nice to work with since I probably want to work with smaller values. And we can do a few different things here. What I can do here is, for example, change the range. I can, for example, make this way smaller, like 0.2. And now this might be a bit more interesting to work with since I can actually now use the full range to fine tune this. 
What could also be interesting is, for example, using one of the logarithmic floats here and pressing apply. And what is interesting with this one is here the spacing. So you see these lines, the spacing, and that means the density. So we can see that at some point we might go quickly down in value. At some point we go quickly slow in value. So that's because of the scaling it automatically has here. So my range is here, maximum 0.2. So if I would place this in the middle, I should have the value 0.1. But since I'm using a logarithmic float value, it's not 0.1, and 0.1 is somewhere here. So you see how much difference this could make. And in this case, it might be useful, as it really allows us to have some really fine tuning in there. But you don't have to use this if you would prefer the normal float. So we can always switch back to float press apply and now it's back to that normal float. Now another thing we can do is we can also go into our bevel node. We can click on distance so we actually see the channel reference and we can for example say multiply or divide by certain values. So let's say my bevel slider here goes from 0 to 1 or 10 even and then what we can do is we can actually divide here by 10, for example. So our input value automatically gets super small. So press apply. And let's check out that value. So now we can also, we can change it a bit better. So it might be useful again to sometimes, for example, here, divide by 10. You can type in more complicated math algorithms if you want to, but you can also use it very simple, like you see here, like dividing by 10, multiplying by 10, things like that. And that was it for this video. So we talked a bit about basic parameter creation here uh, with our tools. Now, if you are interested in diving into this more, we will have more videos, but you can also now explore uh, the tool on your own. Like for example, we can play around here with the length of the line. So you can see we have the length of that line. So we can expose these values uh, as well. So for example, you could have now the ability to grab any value you see here from each node and expose them here in the menu. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.